please join us singing Lift High the Cross. Sunday of Lent at the Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church via live stream, and we come together to worship God, to thank Him for the gift of Jesus Christ. This is a time of crisis in our, in our land, in our country, and in our world, and so we come to place ourselves firmly in the hands of Jesus Christ, in whom we place our trust. So let us bow our heads and acknowledge our sins as we ask the Lord for His pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Surely the Lord 
Israel's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, 
You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His parents answered and said, 
We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this, is a man, this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want, it to, want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome to Blessed Sacrament Church on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Jesus Christ opens the eyes of a man born blind. You are tuning in to Holy Mass via the internet live streaming because we are all together in this coronavirus pandemic, a national and international emergency. And you'll hear me say today what I hope you will never hear me say again for the rest of my life. Do not come to Mass. Stay home and stay safe. But watch Mass even every day and participate through live streaming the best you can. As I give this homily, we all find ourselves in a place of uncertainty, crisis. We don't really know what tomorrow will bring. I was comparing with the crisis that we know best here in Savannah, and that is hurricanes, right? I've been through three of them since I arrived here at Blessed Sacrament. And of course, with hurricanes, we know it's coming. We can see it on the news rolling towards Savannah. And we try to prepare the best we can. We don't know how bad it's going to be, if it's going to be a direct hit. So we flee and wait to see, don't we? We go to a place away from the coast. Why? Because we do not want to die. But in this coronavirus crisis, we know it's coming, it's here. We prepare the best we can. 
We don't know how bad it would be, and we cannot flee except into social distancing. And there's something about that which really nips us. It is inhuman to avoid other humans. No man is an island. We're made for communio, for communion, to be with one another, aren't we? I don't like celebrating Mass tonight and in an empty church, 5.30 on Saturday. So, in time of crisis, we prepare for the worst, we pray and work for the best, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, right? Thurgood Marshall said, the measure of a country's greatness is its ability to retain compassion in time of crisis, to continue to look around you and care about other people, even when our own future is uncertain. Desmond Tutu said, a time of crisis is not just a time of anxiety and worry, it gives a chance for us to choose well or to choose badly. And Stuart Weil, he said, in a time of crisis, we all have the potential to morph up to a new level and do things we never thought possible. The word crisis, it means a crossroad. It is a time of danger. It is also a time of opportunity. We have to go in one direction or another. Crisis makes us stronger. A friend was remarking to me this week, you know, in 1941, the United States was in a crisis and our young men had to go fight in World War II, causing great hardship to them, to their families, to the country, to the economy. And of course, many of them never came home. In 2020, the United States is in a crisis but all most of us have to do is sit on our couch, stay isolated. I think we can handle this. God is giving us a wonderful gift. He is giving us the best Lent ever. It is an imposed penance on all of us, isn't it? The whole world. We have to stay home and we are simplifying our lives. We can't go to restaurants or soccer games. All we can do stay home and be still and we can pray and be with our families god is going to bring good from this there's a great line in the movie i am legend if you ever saw that movie and the line is this and i quote it is quieter now if we listen we can hear god speak end of quote People have been asking me the classic crisis questions. Let's review some of those. First crisis question. Father Brandon, is God punishing us for our sins? First of all, God is infinite love and goodness. He is not vindictive. He loves all of us and will never stop loving us. There's nothing you can do today to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do today to make God love you less. It is true that God is also infinite justice, and we see his infinite justice and his mercy work together. But there are consequences to sin. In Catholic theology, we always say that evil comes from three sources, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And of course the world is fallen because of original sin. It's broken. There are two kinds of evil in our understanding. There's physical evil and there's moral evil. Physical evil examples would be a hurricane, an earthquake, a car accident, a coronavirus, a man born alone. These are things that no one person caused but because of original sin, our fallen world, bad things happen and cause people a lot of suffering. A moral evil is when a person chooses to steal, cheat, kill, or be unkind, or violate any one of God's commands. That is a moral evil, and it is incommensurably worse, the Catechism says, than physical evil. So who caused the coronavirus? The simple answer is Adam and Eve. It is a physical evil. 
It was caused by original sin, which brought sickness, suffering, and death into the world. Poison is leaking out because of original sin. It is an evil. The disciples asked the same question the day to Jesus about the man born blind, didn't they? They asked it in a different way. Lord, was it his sin or the sin of his parents which caused him to be born blind? And Jesus said, neither. God is not vindictive, but sin brings suffering and death. God permitted this physical evil of the man being born blind so that the works of God might be made visible through him. God will bring good from evil, both physical and moral. That's what the crucifix teaches us. The greatest evil possible in the world, the crucifixion and death of Jesus, and God brought the greatest good from it. God never wills evil. This is ontologically impossible. He is infinite goodness and infinite love. But God does foresee evil and permit it in order to bring a greater good from it. Because of our suffering right now, God is teaching us how to love more deeply, how to trust Him, how to serve others most powerfully is where we learn to serve others in time of crisis. However, our personal sins also contribute to physical evil in the world. So I want to be clear about that. It is not that God is sending a plague because we have sinned, but it is often that plague comes when people violate natural law. In Catholic moral theology, we have an expression, God always forgives. Man sometimes forgives, but Mother Nature never forgives. God has made human beings to behave, to operate in a certain way. And when we choose to ignore that, bad things are going to happen. Archbishop Fulton Sheen used to use the analogy or the metaphor of a steam, the old locomotive train. And he said one day the train is riding down the tracks and suddenly God snaps his fingers and endows that train with the gifts that you and I have as humans, memory, intellect, free will, and imagination. And the train begins to do what you and I do every day. It begins to look at itself and think. And the train begins to reflect. Hey, it says here on my dashboard that I can only burn 5,000 pounds of pressure in my boilers. And it says here that I can only run 30 miles an hour. Well, I want to run, burn 10,000 pounds of pressure in my boilers because what does that engineer that made me really know about me? And I think I'm going to run 60 miles an hour. And because the train had free will, that's exactly what it did. It increased the pressure, it increased speed, and of course we all know what happened to the train. The first time it hit a curve in the track, the train jumped the track. It turned over three times, it fell off a cliff, and when it landed, it exploded and burned. It was never free to go anywhere, never free to do anything. God did not send the plague, but the plague came because the train did not obey its creator. The second crisis question people always ask, well thought of Brandon, if God is so powerful and good, why doesn't he just stop this virus? If we pray, won't God hear our prayers? Yes, God always hears our prayers and he always answers our prayers, but God always answers our prayers with our eternal salvation in mind. Yes, we pray, we hope that God will put an end to this suffering. We pray with faith, we pray with perseverance like a little child, but trust in Jesus. His plan is the best plan, which will save us all. Sometimes God answers prayers in the way we ask them, and sometimes God answers prayers in different ways. In Romans 8, St. Paul says we don't know how to pray as we ought, right? So the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning. Sometimes God does not answer the prayer we pray, but the prayer we should have prayed. So let's say a prayer together right now. Dear Jesus, 
Please send away the coronavirus. Take it away, Lord. Don't let it hurt anyone or kill anyone or cost anyone or make our lives miserable. Please, Jesus, hear our prayer. Have mercy. Take away this virus. Amen. Did God hear our prayer? Of course he did. Now remember with God, there is no such thing as time. Psalm number 90, a thousand years, a single day, is all the same with God. So God does not experience or see things in categories of past, present, and future the way we do. God sees everything present tense. That means right now, God can see you being born present tense. It's not the past. He's watching it happen present tense. Right now, God can see us right here at this Mass, present tense. Right now, God can see the moment of your death happening present tense. And right now, God can, hear, can see you in heaven a thousand years from now. You've been in heaven a thousand years. You're rejoicing in heaven. You're thanking God for everything. You've been in heaven a thousand years if there were years in heaven. God sees that present tense. And then, let's say that you and I are in heaven together a thousand years from now, and we're rejoicing, and we decide to say another prayer to Jesus. Let's do it right now. Dear Jesus, please thank you so much for allowing us to undergo that coronavirus in 2020. Because Jesus, that stretched our hearts and prepared us so much for the great glory you were planning to give us. And now we can see clearly the good you are doing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us in that dark time and shining your light and giving us faith and hope and courage and making us great. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the Lord Jesus, who sees everything present tense, says, which one of these prayers do you want me to answer? You prayed two prayers. I can't answer them both because they're asking for opposite things. And what do we say? Jesus, please do what you know is best for us. Because you have a plan, a great plan, to give us eternal happiness. Every crisis opens the eyes of our hearts. In time of darkness, we turn to Jesus to be filled with light. What an incredible land God has given to us. What an opportunity for greatness. Let your holy will be done in everything and everyone. How will we respond to this time of crisis? We will all look back at this time with either satisfaction or regret at the way we respond. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver.
giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence now we lift up our prayers to God, our all-powerful Father. For the church, that we may share the light of the gospel with all who are struggling to recognize good from evil, truth from lies, and selfless love from self-serving activities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For government officials, that God will anoint their minds and hearts so that they may promote the well-being of all whom they serve, particularly the vulnerable and powerless of society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who work in health care, that God will give wisdom to those working to contain the coronavirus, insight to those searching for treatments or a vaccine, and strength to those caring for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are ill, particularly those with the coronavirus, that God will heal them and restore them to their families and communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our Lenten observance may wake us from sleep and fill us with light to bring forth all that is good and right and true. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the dead, especially those whose anniversaries we celebrate this week, Will Madison, Nacidas Flores, Sr., and Gail K. Perkins, and for Dean Yonsey, who for, for whom this Mass is offered, may be raised up with Christ and seated in the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our God, our Father, we ask our prayers in union with Blessed Mother Mary and all your angels and all your saints. We ask that you hear and answer all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, for he is Lord forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Yeah. 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us safe for everlasting life.
invite you to make a spiritual communion. Simply close your eyes and we ask Jesus to come into us, body, blood, soul, and divinity, as he comes to us in the Eucharist. Though we're not able to receive him physically now, we know that he can come to us completely at any time in any place, and we invite him to do that now, to be in union with him profoundly in heart, mind, soul, and body. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remind all of you watching from home that we will uh, have Mass live streamed every day, Monday through Friday, and then also 5.30 Saturday, and Sunday morning at 8, we'll have Mass live streamed here from the church. Again, if you're not permitted to come to church right now because of our social isolation, we have to practice, but we will bring uh, the Mass to you. and. Uh, continue to take care of all of our people here at Blessed Sacrament as we make it through these difficult days. Our school children have made it their Lenten observance for the last, well, many years. They come to Mass every Sunday in the 40 days of Lent. I'm going to be asking our school children to continue to do that through the internet. Come to Mass every day in the morning and, um, and pray with us to begin your school day as you're learning from home. All the church activities have been canceled or postponed until further notice, so are there are no announcements about anything happening except we have Mass every morning at 8, live streamed, and then we have a exposition of the Blessed Sacrament at 7 p.m. Monday through Friday night. We uh, expose the Holy Eucharist and for adoration. We pray the Rosary, and then we give benediction. It's about 35 minutes. But please join us for either or both of these. Just make sure you remain in contact with your parish because we're all praying together to the Lord for an end to this crisis and that we make it through this crisis and learn what the Lord wants us to learn and grow in the way he's calling us to grow. You can read, go online to our website, um, Blessed Sacrament website or our Facebook page, and that's where the um, all these will be live streamed from. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. He will get us through. He always does. We always keep our eyes fixed on him, and we're going to make it through this as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. And Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast in hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruined souls. Amen.